Hello and welcome everyone. We've got some Star Ladder Europe Season 11. I'm Helium, continuing on for Cyclops. He was uh, enough of a bro to come on and cover those first three games. I'll be finishing out the day with these next four, and we might have some guests along the way, but for right now, it's just me. We've got the Lions going up against Basically Unknown. These are two teams that were brought in to replace... Uh, obviously another two teams. Basically Unknown came in for Cloud9 and Lions came in Radiant for Team Tinker. And I believe that both records were uh, washed and they had to replay the game. So they've been playing a lot of games here in Star Ladder. Uh, I'm not sure what happened with Lions, but I know for a fact that's what Basically Unknown did with Cloud9's record. But already we've got some picks. Vengeful Spirit, Slark, Dazzle. Lions going Ogre, Venomancer, Ancient Apparition. And anti-mage, and anti-mage, it's, it's a hero they've used before, they used it four days ago, and I believe that's when 6.83 should have been live, or maybe five, six days ago. Uh, and they did anti-mage with the Venomancer, so this is something that they definitely run. Uh, they've remaining. been picking up, and yeah, not too much Ancient Apparition, their supports so five far have mainly remaining. been Disruptor, Witch Doctor, and Vengeful Spirit. So the Ancient Apparition stands out a little done. bit, as does the Ogre, given the uh, recent nerfs to the hero. I, I think the hero's still really good. Uh, we'll probably just see it uh, go in like what Sand King does these days. You just take those boots first. Make up for the, the lack of range on your stuns. And then we can look over to Basically Unknown. They've picked up a Vengeful Spirit. Big, powerful support we see a lot these days. And they've been picking quite a bit of it. They've also uh, been enjoying their Slark. And they've had some good success with it. Uh, their last three Slark games, uh, I believe they won. That was in Join Dota League and also uh, Star Series 11, which is this, uh, versus the Vega Squadron. So they've been having some pretty good success with that Slark. Uh, and the Vengeful Spirit Dazzle. So you see there's some negative armor elements there, of course, uh, with the Venge and the Dazzle's what, ha Ten Wave of Terror and remaining. Weave. Uh, so we can see that. And Beastmaster here, obviously getting Five buffs in 6.83. So we can look into those. And just because, you know, the patch is fresh, we've got the patch notes up just so we don't get confused. We don't get anyone too upset. So now you get the uh, Call of the Wild that will always provide a hawk and a boar at each level. Instead of only doing the hawk at level 1, you get a boar now as well. And that boar will have 200 HP. It'll do 15 damage. And it will attack fairly slow. Actually, no. It'll attack at 1.25 base attack time uh, at all levels. So that's actually a pretty big... Eh. I don't know. I guess that's a buff. But... Obviously, having the board level 1 is. You can do some stacking with it. You can control the runes, no problem, as an offlane. So I think Beastmaster comes back into play a little bit more. You can dominate uh, the lane, even. I mean, sure, it's only 15 damage, but it helps. Uh, with the denies, helps with last hits if you find yourself in a 1v1 lane. So we could see Beastmaster coming back into play. Uh, his aura is obviously always great, helps a lot with the push, and with the changes to the way uh, the bounty works off of the melee and range racks, instead of just being, what, 300 and then maybe 125 gold per building, it's now like 625 and 350 gold split amongst the team per building, so that's a pretty big increase. Uh, so if you can use that aura to push down the racks, that, that should help. But for now, it looks like, I mean, Slark and Beastmaster, if they get a blink Radiant on either of them, blink. probably both, maybe Force Staff on Beast, Blink or Shadow Blade on Slark, we see a lot. And the Lions will go for this Axe pick, and this is something I also ran. Uh, so they had a game versus my Insanity in uh, Star Ladder Season 11 four days ago, and they picked Venomancer, Anti-Mage, and Axe. They also did Eventual Spirit, and you can see that was the first pick for Basically Unknown, so it doesn't look like Lions were able to get their hands on it. Ten seconds so it's remaining. definitely a known thing for Lions. They're, they're going on what's Five working, as they're having really good success with, uh, with their roster, and just doing well in Star Ladder and games in general. Um, they are 8 and 2, so they're actually in the third place spot in the round robin, so they're a team that would move forward in Star Ladder. They've got They've played 10 games, and they've got five more to go, and this is one of them. So it could be pretty big. And now Beastmaster and Invoker picked up. So we've got some of the negative armor. A lot Slark to jump on someone, blow them up. And Invoker and Beastmaster, I mean, we'll see if we see Quas Wex or Quas Exhort. But if the Forge Spirits come out with the Necro books, Beastmaster with uh, his creeps, uh, the, and of course his aura, that's going to be pretty powerful stuff for the push. 
You really should prepare so we'll see what they want to do with that. I wanted to check back into that other game, though, and see exactly uh, what they were building. So, or what exactly what Axe was building. So it looks like they take it maybe just straight into the jungle, maybe offlane, but Big Easy, I guess that's Giannis and Fan's name. Um, he's just been going Blink Dagger, Blade Mail, Tranquils, probably not in that order, probably Tranquils, Magic Wand, Blink, uh, Blade Mail, and then an Aghanim Scepter, even picking up the Ags, raising that health threshold on the Dunk. Uh, it has been, let's see, is it Ape Mother playing here on the Venomancer? Yes, it is. It is that core Venomancer going into the mid lane, as this hero has fallen off quite dramatically uh, as a support pick. We see it a lot in these core roles. More often in the safe lane, but seeing it in the mid lane, able to get some quick levels. That'll be some fun stuff. Giannis and Fan looks like he'll be starting in the jungle, travel. rotating the, to the off lane when the experience gets there. Uh, and Era, of course, playing on that Anti-Mage, just doing what you do on Anti-Mage, get that Battle Fury and get some other items. Uh, so that's the Lion's plan. We've got Ancient Apparition played by Handskin, Seal Kid on the Ogre, Giannis and Fan on the Axe. That's Era, of course, X-Fanatic player. Sure, a lot of fans of that player there. On the Anti-Mage, an Ape Mother middle on the Venomancer. Now looking over to Unknown. On the Slark, we've got Mind Control. Uh, Beastmaster is going to be played by Kefka. We'll look over to the Venge. That's going to be Zeroji. It will be offlane Beastmaster, by the way. Middle lane, it's going to be Slavi. We already see the points in Exort, so pretty expected, I think, along with the Beastmaster pick that he wants to get the Quas Exort. Uh, we'll see how long Zeroji wants to stick around here. Might just be dropping some wards and uh, Dazzle Magoma supporting in the bottom lane. And if we quickly look, we've got uh, some nice wards here. That's ward, obviously. And this one here as well. It's going to help support Beastmaster in the off lane. And the Lions playing pretty standard uh, with their vision. They've just got one ward up here. And I don't know if they've placed their other one yet. And if they did, it was maybe dewarded, or I'm just really not awake. Oh, or they were standing on it. Okay, so yeah, top rune and bottom rune warded up. And they're going to have a quick rotation over. This is a level one smoke. So, no skills yet on either of these heroes. The Ancient Apparition or the Ogre Magi. Smoke will break. I think it just runs out, maybe close to the tower. There's the Gale. There's going to be a big slow onto Slavi. And with the Gale, with the stun, they will actually go for the Chilling Touch. And that's going to be more than enough. I thought he might go for the Cold Feet. But, of course, Chilling Touch, you get in on three. That's going to be a lot of damage. So, that's a big early pickoff on the Invoker. And I mean, this is one of those heroes. You die two, three times early on in the middle lane, and, and your game feels like it's almost over. I'm sure Slavi's got what it takes uh, to bring it back, but we see that early gold and experience going out to the Lions. Up top as well, Kefka. So Seal Kid will go back up top now, going to back up Era. He don't want Kefka to get too much. Well, he hasn't actually got anything. He's only got one last hit. And here come the Boars. And let's not forget, you can summon them individually now, which is pretty awesome. Obviously, that change is a little older, but now that you can just get these two, level, two Boars up, and it's only 15 mana, so... Every 45 seconds, you're using about 30 mana. It's easily sustainable to have a pretty good lane last sitting under tower with that 30 damage when you've got two of them. And of course, the 66 uh, base damage of Beastmaster. It makes it pretty easy to find the CS. So he'll be doing well. Who's doing extremely well right now? Sure, they're neutral creeps, but Giannis and Fan, 13 last hits on this axe already. Still jungling up like a boss. I'm not actually even sure what he's doing to stay this high of HP. I guess it was just the Tangos. I didn't quite catch his other region purchases. And now Kefka's in some trouble up top. There we go. There's the lock-in. Can they get him to lock in place? No. Yes, they do. That's like a max range. And they'll just whack him in the face. Uh, oh, no. No walrus whacker there for Seal Kid. But that's another nice kill. That's a good rotation. So Ogre Magi showing he can still get it done. Even without the boots first. Max is going to finish up his Tranquil Boots, and we'll check it at the bottom lane where Mind Control is farming pretty nicely. 18 and 5. We've got Zoroji on this Ventral Spirit. Just trying to get those levels, doing some pools. And I wanted to look into basically Unknown. They've been picking a lot of Slark, I mentioned it. They've actually been picking quite a few sea creatures. Slark and Slardar coming into the fold uh, for this basically Unknown team. Uh, but let's look at what they did with the hero up against Vega and Star Ladder the other day. So... Not the, the, yeah, okay, so he did opt for the Shadow Blade in that game, and he probably will do the same thing here. That way Anti-Mage can't jump on him or take his mana or Axe with the call. Eh, I mean, Axe actually is a really good hero against Slark. He goes into the Shadow Dance, Axe is like, don't care, like, I still know vaguely where you are. Jump in, throw down the, uh, the Battle Cry or whatever, what is that build even called? Berserker's Call, there you go, throw down the Call. Uh, get Slark's attention and waste his Shadow Dance, and that's going to be problematic for the little fish. 
But Shadowblade Scotty and Basher is what uh, Slavi has been doing. And it is Slavi. Uh, Mind Control, I guess that's his Dota buff name, Slavi. But there you go. That's what that's what his build has been. So we'll, we'll see Shadowblade come out probably first. I wouldn't be surprised if still the Blink Dagger comes up. This is just, again, one game that he's played it on. Um, and any other repeat heroes from that roster? It does not look like it. You can check in another one of his Slark games. They've actually won all three of those Slark games. So it, the hero has been working out for them. And we look into another one. Yep, he went Shadowblade into the Eye of Scotty. So it's definitely going to be the build that we're going to see. And, of course, that game went longer, so he was able to get into an Abyssal Blade. So there you go. That's definitely the Purple Sword, the Eye of Scotty, and the Basher. That's what Slark is going to want to go for this game. Ape Mother on the Venomancer. I'm kind of curious what he's going to want to build. Uh, I would expect the mechanism to come out. Sure, it's... I mean, if you get a mechanism on Venomancer, you're probably... You're saying to yourself, well, I'm never using my alt. And I wonder if he'll even bother to skill it up uh, at level 6 or even at, like, level 8. It is pretty good in the team fight if you get it off, but the mech could arguably be better uh, to keep yourselves up. And Ape Mothers just want to... They just want to create space for this anti-mage, right? Let Era get as much farm as possible. Uh, he's at 21 last hits right now, so it's going quite well. 25 for the Slark. He's got the most. And 24 for Axe. And looking at the mid lane, Venomancer not having the best time. They found that early kill, and it was actually the first blood. Oh, Slavi is the invoker player. I get it. So, looks like Slavi was playing on the Slark. And they'll mix it up a little bit, putting mind control onto the hero. So maybe we do see that blink come out. And here you go. This is the, something I talked about on the draft with the boar. Just now that you have it at level 1. I know that Beastmaster is doing okay. He went down once, but he's level 3. But sometimes the offlane just doesn't start off fantastic. Now that you have the boar at level 1, though... As an offlaner, you can, e or even a support, you can just easily control the runes, and they are very important, especially the first runes now, uh, with the 100 XP, 100 gold on the double bounty rune spawns at the zero minute, or the one minute. No, they still spawn at zero. Oh, Midas for the Slark. Now we see Axe getting a little low. Probably see the Blink Dagger first. Is he coming over for bottle sips? How nice. Maybe that's how he's been keeping his region up so good. Going over to the mid lane for bottles. That's actually pretty cool. It's not like Venomancer is a, a hero that's going to get down and dirty and try to trade damage with someone. He just like sits in a lane, and that's it. Just sit there, make sure you don't lose your tower. Maybe you get a tower if uh, the enemy heroes leave the lane for a while. He's not doing exceptionally well on a farm, but it doesn't matter. If he's uh, keeping the axe this healed up, axe has stacks. So he's going to be farming exceptionally well. And yeah, nothing's getting past these guys. It's lovely. Something only a Venomancer could love. If I was Invoker, I would not want anything to do with this. I think that's the new... Mandible of the Hydra, yeah. Pretty cool. Nice to see Venomancer picking up some sets. And Slavi, he goes uh, Quas Exhort. We'll see if he wants to go for the, the Midas Necrobook Brown Boots, I think is the more standard build coming out of the Quas Exhort tree. Uh, keep those Brown Boots, so later on you can just go for the Boots of Travel and become that split-pushing menace that we see quite often as they try to bring down this boar. Oh, the Ignites! Oh, the Deny! Nice. Wasting mana. That's some uh, efficiency from the Beastmaster. He's, he's feeling pretty good about that one. Steel Kid's like, darn it, I got outplayed. 105 mana used on that, and then it got denied. Arrow's going to pick up his uh, power treads. He's got the Ring of Health. He has not even been forced to use out any regen. Handskin's up here. Well, let's check out the... This has not been deboarded. That word is... Okay, it runs out now, so good thing we pointed it out. That's been protecting him a little bit. I think the one was a smoke and or they came up the river. That was the one death that Kefka has taken. And here we're going to see a rotation from a basically unknown. Zoroji in mind control. Get to get down to business to defeat the Venomancers. See what they can do. Unless they want to go in for the axe. Ooh, okay. Maybe they take a... Re oh, this is going to be good. The Trickle Boots are on the ground. Yonasum fan. Oh, mind control grabs them. Things have gone terribly wrong here. The axe is going to fall. It's Slark that gets the kill. It's Slark that was actually rotated in there off the bottom lane. 
And that's giving it over to Dazzle here on Magoma. So that's really, really going to put behind this axe. He just lost quite a bit of gold. Oh, man. And he'll just ultimate and TP out of there. My control with an extra pair of shoes to shadow dance with. His green suede shoes. He has <laughs> immediately more tranquil boots bought up by the axe. I mean, it's not the most expensive boot. It's like, what, 975? As I embarrass myself with my lack of Dota knowledge. A thousand! Okay, I was pretty effing close. So that's, uh, that's pretty big. That hurts. Just look at the net worth. Axe would have been at 2700, and now he is, he is not. He's at 1700. You might go, ah, Mike. Hmm. Giannis and Fan's pretty durable. He's going to throw out this call. Can they even get this Lark? He does not have that ultimate. The dunk goes out, and yeah, Axe will be able to pick up that kill first. And the Ogre able to escape. So that's pretty nice. A little bit of revenge there. But the Slark has got to be feeling better about that. And Axe feeling possibly foolish. There's no Invis heroes, really. I don't really count Slark. Uh, I guess until he gets the Shadow Blade. I don't think Axe will be relying on dropping Tranquils so they repair themselves at that point in the game. Especially now, I don't think he'll be dropping Tranquil Boots or any items at all. But that smoke can catch you off guard. I mean, you expect to be covered. You've got wards down, and those supports get on your back lines. It can ruin your day. That is for sure. Axe, though, I think he wants some more blood. Ogre's going to come down to that. Bottom lane, try to get the kill. Onto the Dazzle. Dazzle's up to level 6 right now. He goes 3 points in Poison Touch, 1 in Grave, 1 in Shadow Wave, and he's got 1 in Weave, actually, rather early. And uh, even some more armor. Actually, bonus armor or armor reduction. The 6.83 change to Medallion, I think, was uh, really awesome. Being able to give 6 armor to an ally on the front lines is, is sick. I think that's the only way to put it. That's going to be pretty nice for trying to bring down Axe. I mean, as when he goes for the call, he gets plus 40, and that's quite a bit. Oh, oh sorry, I was stretching. Kefka will go down on the top lane. Beastmaster falling to the Anti-Mage. Anti-Mage on the board, 1 and 0. And Tazzle in the bottom lane, just going to get blown up. Giannis and Fan won't survive that engagement, though. It Ignite goes out, but it's just an afterthought. Zoroji will be safe. And now in the middle lane is... Uh, ooh, the Ice Wall is going to have to be thrown down here. Ape Mother is trying to battle. Doesn't have that ultimate. So I don't think he has really much kill potential unless someone rotates over. We already saw one of those. That was the first blood that they got onto Slavi. Beastmaster just took his second death. He goes for the urn. And at the bottom rune spawn, Mind Control is going to find himself a seal. Really just wanted the rune. And he found a bounty. Swap is there. Oh, Zoroji was thinking about going for it. The level 1 range swap is not the best. Axe maybe could have been up towards that Blink Dagger already had he not died three times and lost his Tranquil Boots. But he, he's an Axe. You pick Axe to fight and make space. It doesn't really matter too much what he does. Sure, the Tranquil Boots thing sucks, but what really matters is Anti-Mage is top of your net worth right now. He's 5.1k. Slark is pretty close behind at 4.6. Won't really be able to keep up with the farming. Uh, maybe if he goes Blink Dagger, he, he can almost, but even still, Antimage is going to farm incredibly fast. Invoker's at 4.3, and this Venomancer's at 3.4. He's got the Aquila, Treads, here comes the Magic Wand now. Ooh, Ice Blast is online, that's going to hurt. Man, Ice Blast versus... Or Ice Blast and Poison Nova, that's pretty frustrating. Obviously, Poison Nova is non-fatal if it's the only thing on you. Well, it's just non-fatal in general, but it'll, it'll get you low enough to the point where you will shatter. So let's... Some pretty good synergy between those abilities if you land them both, and if one of them ever even gets skilled this game, because we've seen that Sorry, Ape Mother on the Veno likes to go for the mechanism. Oh, nice use of the uh, Ice Wall there. Another Cold Snap's gonna go out. Ape Mother taking quite a bit of damage. There's no Invoke, so there's no Sun Strike here, and he will not miss uphill, so it'll be the Venomancer to fall with the Ice Blast coming in. Oh, just narrowly gonna miss. Now Axe trying to get involved. He's pretty fast. He's got 380 move speed. Slavia is still slowing. Boom! Goes the Dynamite. Giannis and the fan gonna come in with the dunk. That'll bring down the Invoker. Now up top, they want to engage. It's gonna be Slark to rotate up. He'll jump onto Era. That's a big kill on the Anti Mage. Now Hanskin trying to get out of here. The swap, though, to cancel the last minute from Zoroji. Seal Kid trying to help out a friend, but he can't. Hanskin will fall, and now they might even go further. Pounce coming off the cooldown in about five seconds. Oh, nicely done using that Hawk for that vision. And that'll be four points in Call of the Wild as 
That spell is the one that to get maxed more often than not. And now we've got a Shadow Dance. There is no... Oh, there is a TP coming out here from Mind Control. He gets out. Zoroji, can he get out? Just narrowly escapes the red hands of the axe. He doesn't get caught red-handed, perhaps? Either way, they get out. They're feeling good about that one. Basically unknown. Uh, I spent a little bit less time talking about them, but if we want to look at their record in Star Ladder, as they've been replaying all these games, they're the team that came in for Cloud9. Uh, they're 5-6. and six. They're at ninth right now. You need to be in the top four. That's where Lions is. Uh, so this could be a big game for them. They could go 6-6. Six, six, and that'll be 12 of their 15 games. So they could go 9-6. Uh, teams like Lions and Navi, 8-2, and 7-2. Hellraisers is up in first at 11 and 4, and they're done. They've played all their games. Team Secrets 10 and 1. Uh, I know they're. I think they're playing in another tournament today, and there is a secret game coming up, or supposed to be coming up. I saw chat freaking out that it might not happen, but no official word on that. So don't panic too much. But we'll let you know when the time comes. Either way, Slavi's in some trouble. Ice Blast is gonna land. <laughs> so is the Ice Wall. Everyone's very slow. we I didn't know Dota implemented a slow motion mode in 6.83, but we see it there. Uh, in mid. I wonder what Beastmaster goes for. I'd like to see the urn coming up, and we also saw another fantastic item, Medallion of Courage, which brings me to this point. If you don't have an urn or a Medallion of Courage on your team, I think you're playing Dota wrong uh, in this current patch. Like, they're both exceptionally good. I could see if you don't really need it, or it doesn't really bother for your strategy. Like, like Lions, for instance. They're not too worried about anything except their anti-mage getting absolutely jacked. So maybe you don't need it, but I feel like they're pretty good items to make some space with. The mechanism included into that. But, I don't know. They're pretty good. It's hard to find a reason not to go for it. It's rather cheap. I mean, it's always been an item that Vengeful Spirits wanted to go for. And Slark is getting so involved. He farmed up, what, I think the Midas, and then he ganked Axe, took his Tranquils, and now he's still ganking people. Does have that minus off of cooldown. He'd like to go get a use into that. And they might have their. Oh no, that's not the biggest target. They're just going to go after the Venomancer. Ape Mother will go down. And Sunstrike from the Invoker will finish him off. And Invoker with. Uh, if I could click. You know, they've got Foreign Quas, Foreign Exhort. Ice Blast is even going to miss. So that's a little unfortunate. And here comes that push. We've got the standard 2 4 1 1 build at a level 8 Beastmaster. If, you, if you're looking at Beastmaster as a hero that got buffed in this patch, and you're like, man, I, I might play Beastmaster. This is your skill build right here. It's it's the best. The, the points, well, it's hard to say maybe not in pubs, because even if you have great use of your Hawks and Vision, your team might not do anything intelligent with the information you provide them. Uh, but I think the third and fourth point in that Hawk are exceptionally good. And I, that's really like the most powerful aspect of Beastmaster is controlling vision. And especially since the, the Fog of War changes a little bit. I'm not quite sure the direct Does implications that of that. Seems like maybe Night Stalker has helped out. And we've seen Night Stalker banned a few times already in 6.83. I don't know if he's been played, as I haven't uh, focused too much on Dota the last week. As, as I was casting Counter-Strike, which was fun. It's a very different game. Mind Control is going to find 8 Mother out. There is an invisibility rune. Ooh, that's Unstrike. We'll still land 8 Mother quite low. And yeah, we can see him up here. He's going for the mech. He's got the buckler. And as you would expect, the poison Nova, um, not skilled at all. And here, let me, sorry. I put this back on last night and I kind of forgot about it. Dr. Kleiner is a little loud. We'll throw on our, our good homegirl, the regular announcer. Invoker actually finds a kill on Anti-Mage. And that happens at the bottom lane. I guess Anti-Mage get in a little frisky. Slavi is there to, to bust out Magoma's Dazzle. And that's big. That's 615 experience apiece to both the Invoker and the Dazzle. Now up top, Axe is going to go ahead and jump in. That's a good combo right there with an Ancient Apparition. So some nice synergy between uh, quite a few of the heroes on this team. The Poison Nova goes out. Ape Mother picks it up at level... 11 and level 10 actually he'll get ranked 2 at level 11 right now. Kefka though is on to a killing spree. Mind control with a double kill as Slark TP's in. Oh, and the weave going out. So you've got 44 armor, but it's not enough. It's enough to find one more dunk. He'll bring down the Slark, but Invoker TP's up. He just killed Eros Anti Mage. Goes to the top lane. He'll bring down Jonasum Fan's axe as well. And now here we are with some boars, with some forged spirits, that zoo strategy, all channeling their inner beast. 
And they're going to go for that tower, no problem. Trying to get the split pushed off in the bottom lane, though, is Era. He's 1 and 2. 122 CS, 41 denies. Third in net worth, first for his team at 7k. Slark up to 7.7 .7 and Invoker at 7.5. So the Lions, who actually won the last two uh, matchups against basically Unknown, in the third one, it, it might be the lucky game for Unknown. Well, you can't really call it luck. They've been playing exceptionally well. Maybe it's just this Ape Mother Venno. I feel like coming from the mid lane, this hero hasn't done much for them. It came out early in the draft as a hero they like to pick. I think it was before the Beastmaster and or the Invoker. So Venomancer wasn't a response to like, oh, let's stop some push. And maybe it's done that. But as we look middle, that tower's dead. As we look top, this tower's dead. So when basically Unknown group up and they want to take towers, Venomancer's not stopping it whatsoever and he still doesn't have a mech at 18 minutes like things have not gone well for the banana and uh well nor have they gone well for venge as this blink call ice blast is uh, a really really nice combo as arrow's gonna go ahead and try to get himself a tower he will he'll get the last hit on it also now seal kid ate mother handskin in that mid lane of the, the headdress it was coming out to be delivered but Inventory is full. Mind Control's here in mid. He's going to jump in onto the Ancient Apparition. <laughs> nice. And Kafka's actually out there behind. Hanskin will get off his uh, ultimate. See, the Ice Blast connects onto two. Ape Mother is pretty low. I don't think Kafka's going to be getting out of this one. Oh, maybe. Magoma's there with the Grave, and he finds it. He's also got the Weave. Nice. Going to cast on absolutely everyone. Ape Mother just standing in it. His armor is disappearing so quickly. Slavi comes in. He goes on to the dominating streak. Now Anti-Mage to run away. He's trying to help out Ape Mother. Is it worth it, though? He'll kill Mind Control in the end and be able to blink away. So for Anti-Mage, yeah, individually it's worth it. But for him and his entire team, they lose that 4 for 2 And things may be starting to unravel. Uh, Slavi does go for the Midas Necro book. Actually opted to finish up the Treads, which is a little unorthodox. A lot of times it'll just be the Brown Boots into the Boots of Travel. And a okay, as I click there. Yeah, it was a 4-4-2. We can see actually more experience. Yeah, that makes sense. More experience for basically unknown 4.6k, and they got about 1,200 uh, gold out of that as well. And who's the damage dealer for this team? Slark and Invoker doing so much, but look at Venomancer. They just don't have a qu they don't have quite enough damage coming from anyone else to finish it off. Venomancer does more than anybody in that fight. 2.5k, and some of his allies only pulling like mid hundreds of damage if we average it out there. Uh, so look for them to step it up. Era's not quite online yet, so that's understandable. He's got the Battle Fury, the Yasha, the Power Treads. When he gets maybe a, a Heart, a Basher, finishing the Manta, of course. Maybe he can look to fight. And let's find Slark. He's done well. He's He did go for the Blink Dagger. So I, I busted out the, uh, the build order earlier, but that was when Slavi played Slark, and he's playing Invoker. So Mind Control looks to do things a little bit differently. And he'll go for that Blink Dagger. Maybe the better choice against uh, a hero like Anti-Mage. You can Blink in, get the Abyssal Blade if we go late game. If Anti-Mage blinks to the trees, you can Blink in to, to try to follow him. Maybe get a Bash if you're just at the Basher. So maybe a bit better of a way to deal with the Anti-Mage. Also just fantastic item anyways. Uh, here we go, Seal Kid. Ooh, we're going to break off the tower. So he's been spotted out. The pings come in. They're looking for Magoma. Magoma also smoked up. But where are the heals coming from? I don't. Who else did he smoke? Was it just himself? Salavi gonna solo. The, okay, no, Zeroji was in there as well. Uh, you're kind of hard pressed to say solo when you have two Forge Spirits and Necro Warriors and Archers, but also a Vengeful Spirit was in there. So that's a, a nice Roshan that the uh, Radiant Squad is going to take right out from under the nose of a lion. The negative armor going out. Seal Kid, that's going to be some big damage. Ignite goes out of the two. Now Mind Control going to jump in. He'll get stunned up. Can he use his... Oh, Axe, he will counter that Grave if he could just get close enough. And now that it's going to run out, he tries to throw the call. Doesn't matter. It looks like the poison is going to bring him down. And uh, Vengeful Spirit as well as the Slark both going down right there. Ogre, the only one to fall for Lion. So that's, a, that's pretty good. And look at Kefka. He went straight for the Boots of Travel after this urn. Another 1,700 gold. Unfortunately, the Ice Blast is just off the mark. No one else is here. Berserker's Call is used, so it's an easy decision to go ahead and TP out of that one as Invoker. Now two points up in the Wex. He's, you know, he's working on the uh, 
He's working on the ghost walk speed, but he is pretty... It's ghost emphasize the walk right now. As when you've got multiple points in Quas, it should actually just change the name to Ghost Run. I think that would be hilarious, but that's just me. Also, Clinks doesn't make any sense either. What is it, like Skeleton Walk? Like, he's so fast, it gives like so much movement speed. It makes no sense. Mantis Styles finished up on Era's Anti-Mage. Top net worth in the game is going to be that Invoker at 11.6, 11.4 for Era. So he's not far behind. And the Lions, you know, they're down four kills. We look at the graphs as a whole. They're, they're fairly far behind here at 22 minutes. About 7,000 gold. We look at experience about 7,500. So basically Unknown having a pretty solid performance. Era going to get the 65 gold off of that maxed up Hawk. But they are trying to hunt him down. Mind controls around in the vicinity. Gonna blink away. Seal Kid does just. Oh, Seal Kid is so poor, man. It's unreal. And with the uh, Manta going out, that's half the mana pool of this Slark. Slark can't do that much without the mana. And now the Gale from Ape Mother gonna land on two. Look at this Ice Blast coming in, landing on everyone right there. I think it got three. Jossum Fan with a dunk as well. Started things off with a beautiful Berserker's Call. And now Slavi. They've gotta bring him down. Era fighting. Those right clicks are strong. That's just the Aegis, though. He's gonna wanna get out of there. I think Giannis and Fan jumps the gun a little bit right there, but here we go. They're going to slow him down. The Ice Vortex going, trying to lock him in place. The Cold Feet, yep, Venomancer, his, or excuse me, Invoker's feet are frozen here. And the Shifting Snows, going to land a Gale as he walks back into that Sentry Ward. Slavi will go down, and it's dunk number two. And a Giannis and Fan, as well as Hanskin, come up really, really big in that fight. They were down four kills. They find all four of them there. And that ties it up 18-18 on the scoreboard, even having to kill that Invoker twice. And they had the detection so that they can kill him twice, because he did get off that Ghost Walk. So things have gone well. The Courier going to bring out that Yule Scepter. It's exactly what Ape Mother has gone for in his uh, previous Venomancer games. He goes straight for the Mechanism and the Yule Scepter of Divinity. Dazzle going to follow a similar path. Eh, not that similar, actually. As Dazzle went for a Midas. He was given some of the, the free lane farm uh, after Slark started roaming around and having finished up his Midas. And, and that was pretty cool. We see a lot more of that these days. Or you'll, you'll put a core hero in a lane, and as soon as that core hero can transition to finding pickoffs or farming the jungle... Uh, or pushing other towers, you just give a lane to a support, let them farm up and, and get some items. Dazzle will take advantage of that, building the Midas. He's got drums and Yule Scepter of Divinity. Uh, move speed for positioning, just the mobility on Dazzle in general goes a long way uh, to the strengths of the hero, getting that Shallow Grave off. Pretty, pretty big. Maybe not as big as usual since Giannis and Fan can chop right through it. But it'll be pretty nice if uh, anyone's maybe going to shatter. Like I talked about earlier, the Poison Nova with the Ice Blast. Poison Nova non-fatal, but it'll reduce your HP really, really quickly. And then you'll shatter. You will not shatter if you've got a Shallow Grave on you. So there's that they can maybe try to work with. Hawk. Kaka! Look at that face. That is the face of determination right there. We have yet to see, and it's something I used to see quite a bit when I very, like, just started casting. I was like two years ago now. Back when uh, the cores of choice were, I think, Sven and Lifestealer in every single game. 6.75, if I'm not mistaken. And I actually saw a few teams busting out the Hawk Lifestealer combination. So once Lifestealer gets put back into Captain's mode, I'm not quite sure why they take him out. I think it's mainly for the bugs of of the uh, whatever, uh, just the bugs involved in uh, whatever it's called, brain control, brain sap off the infestability now. But uh, just being able to control the Hawk, someone's like a support's like, ooh, a Hawk, easy 65 gold. Nope, Lifestealer. Uh, it's maybe a little clowny, a little cheesy, but it's it's pretty hilarious. Also just goes well with Boots of Travel, and in general with Beastmaster, we see him build up his own Boots of Travel, so 
He can go ahead and put his hawk. He can push out a lane, throw the hawk to another lane, and then just boots of travel or send his hawk towards his team. And it's a nice, nice synergy. The boots of travel item and his abilities. Also, the necro books and the forge spirits. Pretty easy to get anyone in and out of fights, which is why I'm surprised Invoker went for treads. Because at a certain point in this game, you're gonna you're gonna be saying, "Damn, I." Should have went boots of travel because Era is gonna. Oh, that was an ominous meatball. Era quickly gonna jump out of that one, not losing all the mana to those Necro units. Got a little worried for him, but at a certain point, as Invoker, you're gonna be upset you didn't go travel because you're gonna be dealing with a split push of the Anti Mage. Maybe the idea is to just group up and, and push faster than he can split push, but Anti Mage is getting to the point where he's gonna finish up this butterfly, he's gonna be split pushing absolutely. Incredibly fast. And I don't know if they're going to be able to deal with it. Beastmaster won't be enough. He'll fall to the Anti-Mage anti one-on-one. He's level 12. Anti-Mage is level 18. So there's a 6 level difference. Uh, actually, the highest level in the game. One of Midas Wielder on the Invoker level 18. Anti-Mage level 18. Axe is actually level 17. He's done really, really well this game. Minus the Tranquil Boot incident, which was a bit awkward. Remedied pretty quickly, but he's still been creating enough space. He does go for, again, the uh, Blink Dagger, the Blade Mail. We looked at a previous game, and he had actually gone for uh, the Aghanim Scepter, but he'll go Shiva's Guard this time, and that's a lot. He'll jump in with it and just bring out a Creep Wave quickly, unless maybe Slark was there and blinked out. Ancient Apparition is going for the Ags after Treads, so not a surprise there. He's about three-quarters of the way, a little more than three-quarters of the way towards the Ags as uh, maybe the next objective. It looks like now it's try to kill Slark. Oh, my gosh. Once more, Mind Control going to get out of there narrowly. And um, maybe Roche. It's respawning in anywhere from a couple seconds to three minutes. That could be a big objective for the Lions here as they've got themselves back in this game with that last team fight up top. A good swap out. Kafka, though, will continue running back towards the Berserkers called Axe. Ape Mother going to get roared. Kafka will go down. That's dunk number one. And I think that's all we're going to find. Anti-Mage is around there. He'll bring down the Ventral Spirit. Axe gets the kill on the Beastmaster, and Mind Control escapes. Maybe he feels a little bit bad about what happened to his uh, to his allies, but got to gotta put that behind you and keep farming. Slavi already doing that, trying to push up the mid lane. Just going to let the Necronomicon and the Forge Spirits do it. And now it's 22-18. Lions, six unanswered kills. So they're looking pretty good. Ice Blast to deter this push. Oh, that was a very short... Oh, my God. Oh, wow. He kills the uh, Necronomicon Warrior. Takes that damage. Slavi had a Blink Dagger. I thought he might want to just Blink in there, auto, auto attack, and get out. But not going to go for it. He doesn't want to risk it. As he's uh, top of the net worth for his team. But he's starting to fall behind. He's now 2,500 gold behind this Anti-Mage. Anti-Mage has finished up that Butterfly. And we look at a hero like Invoker. Sure, he'll go for the MKB when he needs to. I guess the Sheep is the more probable choice. But, I mean, it is Exhort, so we could see him wanting to just go for the strong right click. Mind Control finishes his Scotty after the Blink, so that's there. He'll most likely have to go for this MKB unless the Sheep is done, and then he goes for the Basher type of deal. Uh, either way, some expensive items are now required for basically Unknown, and if they don't get them, I think Era is just going to start to run over them as he does pick up the Aegis of the Immortal right now. And Era, obviously a fantastic player. Oh, as I, as I say that, blinks into the trees and gets stuck. But he'll find his way out. And now here comes the push. Ape Mother also going for the uh, the Poison Nova Aghanim Scepter upgrade. That's going to be his choice. He's very, very close. Another tower and some last hits should do it. He'll bring down the Hawk. And that's 60 gold for him. The boar as well. Seal Kid trying to get the revenge that he he couldn't find that in the very early game. He wants that 36 gold that he was uh, he felt he deserved. All right, Eric is going to be able to be forcing out that glyph on the tier two. He's got the butterfly heart. I guess the next item at this point. Slark can be somewhat tricky to lock down, so maybe he wants to go for an abyssal. Uh, but I think just the heart just become the anti mage that cannot be killed. And also, if he is killed, we'll probably have an Aegis from every point here on out, except for, I guess, the downtime between it expiring and Roche spawning again. But you got to expect Lions are going to want to control that Roche pit. Uh, I guess there's a chance unknown to smoke into it and, and take it away without Lions realizing it, but I doubt it. We saw Invoker and Vengeful Spirit take the first Roche. The second one goes to Era. 
So we see this third Roshan in, what, the next 8, 10 minutes. Going to be having that cheese. That seems like an item that Yannison fan would really love to have. He's got 2.5k gold. Shiva's Guard, Blink Dagger, Blade Mail. You, you get that, Hawk. I don't know what happens if you call a Hawk. Did he miss it or did it just not do anything? Because it can attack. I'm assuming, I would assume it would break invisibility, but actually we've got more pressing matters up top. Kefka trying to go onto Handskin here. He wants some ice cream, and he'll find it. Mind Control going to get slowed up a little bit. Everyone very, very slow. There's a Venomancer, Ancient Apparition combo. Very, very annoying, but we'll have to look into the middle lane. Anti-Mage on his way back up top. We'll find a Vengeful Spirit, who I guess was... Uh, oh, that word's old, so he wasn't trying to put up that word. Maybe, yeah, this is fresh. He was trying to de-ward, grab some map control for his team. Unfortunately, gives up his life. He was kind of alone. At this point, you got to use the buddy system, and even then, I don't know if that's enough. So the Lions tried very hard for the uh, the shutouts over the three meetings of these teams. Lions 2-0 and oh in the recent, I guess, month or a couple weeks uh, in their matchups. Looking to push it to 3-0. and oh. Basically, Unknown was off to a really good start. You can see they peaked at about a 7.5k gold lead, 8k experience. Axe going to jump here onto Mind Control. And this Axe pick really working out uh, for the Lions. And the hero gets... Some changes moving into 6.83, I, I thought. Yes. Uh, so battle hunger duration. Does he even skill battle hunger? Yeah, well, he's got everything max now, of course. Actually, he, Era. He's sheeped. So Slavi does pull out that already. Now Era's in some trouble. He's going to blink out. He'll dodge that poison touch. He's still trying to run here. He's going to blink in another second. That negative urn is not going to be enough to bring him down. It is pure damage. Oh, unless he runs into that sun strike. <laughs> God, that was... Exceptionally close. Ape Mother's going to miss that Gale. <gasps> Catches him out mid pounds, and that's going to put that on cooldown. And the Bash has come in from the Anti Mage. He does take that Bash to route next to Mind Control. The Mana Void will bring him down, but certainly the Ice Blast was going to be able to deal with it. An arrow will go back in about 100 HP, but that's only his first life. Now the Poison Nova goes out onto two. Slavi's slowing down, and he's running through that. That's going to amplify it even more. That's non fatal damage, so he'll survive with one HP. Now onto Magoma. Going to Yule Scepter himself up and he'll fall. Ape Mother gets the kill there. And another, I guess, well, Unknown picked up one kill somewhere along the way. Oh, that was up top. They killed Ancient Apparition. So that was another fight that went 2 for nil in the favor of Lions. Uh, but back to the axe changes, just so everyone's aware. Battle Hunger duration was increased, or Battle Hunger duration from 10 to scaling up to 16 to a flat 10. The damage uh, goes up a little bit. The cast range goes down. The movement in slow goes up 2% from 10 to 12, and the mana... So it's all battle hunger changes, which I don't know how much that affected a jungling axe. It's really been just on point with the Berserker's Call and the Quelling... or the Calling Blade. Quelling Blade not quite as good. And there's that tier 3 tower down. The Meat Maul, the Deafening Blast, gonna try to slow things up, but look at that. Giannis and Fan jumps in, he'll find two. That Ice Blast is coming in hot. It's gonna land on them both. That's a double kill for Era as he lets the Mana Void fly. Now the look onto Mind Control. The Shadow Dance is there. Slark's gonna have to run away. Beastmaster coming in with the roar. It's onto Era. Not really bothered by it whatsoever. The stun's onto Mind Control. The Bashes as well. The Slark will fall, make it a triple kill for Era. Can it be an Ultra? The Grave will go out from Magoma. Now they don't want to get too overzealous. They'll back out. Oh, the Yule Scepter <laughs> to cancel. That was Magoma doing that. Mind Control pounces out of the base. And now on his way back in, Yonison Fan putting the axe to the grindstone. Whew. Era on a monster kill streak just off of that. And now the Tier 3 tower has fallen. They're going for the range barracks, and this is where we're going to see those gold changes uh, to bringing down the racks. Everyone on the team going to get a piece. I believe it's 125 for the ranged. No, 75 for the ranged per per player, and 125 per player. Uh, so it's it's a pretty big increase in gold. It's about it's almost double the gold that it used to give uh, to one person. Now split amongst the whole team, and the range racks is like almost triple the gold. Uh, that it used to give to one person split amongst the whole team. So it's a pretty big change. It, it allows you now, like, if you did have a pushing strat and you break the high ground, you're going to get some more cash flow to allow your, I guess, supports to pick up some better items, maybe finish a big core item, and be more than likely, I guess, to get another lane of racks. Maybe feeling that uh, the tower gold and some of the other changes 
stopped pushing strats more than they liked. I'm not, I'm not really sure. It's it's obviously very new. We'll see how it affects as uh, we have more games to get more data. Just, just wait for the uh, Nahas blog post, basically. Why well, think when Nahas will do it for you? Or I guess uh, K-pop as well. Maybe Phage guy. Well, Lions feeling pretty good. They've more than likely got their third victory in a row against basically unknown, and that's going to put them really good in the standings. Like they're third, they're eight and two. They're about to go nine and two, assuming they get out of this one, and that is almost tying them up with a team like Secret. And if we actually look, what are the other games coming up today? Oops, sorry, camera's moving as I. Uh, we've got Unknown vs. Lions, we're watching that now. Empire Secret is next, and Lion Secret. So that Lions vs. Secret game coming up at 21:15 CET. Going to be really, really important. And uh, My Insanity vs. Basically Unknown closes out the day. And My Insanity 4 and 9, not doing too good. I think they're pretty much out of it. Down there in the uh, bottom five. Six. Roche is back in about two minutes. We're probably to see the Lions farm out. Wait for that Roche to respawn. Take the Roche and the game. Simple as that. There is a tier two tower up here, which is maybe a little bit of what stopped the Lions from just taking the Mega Creeps. Didn't want to get over, too overextended. Make this game harder than maybe it needed to be. They struggled a little bit in the first 20, 22 minutes, but since then it's been all Lions. That Antimage comes online, joins into the fights. Axe and uh, Ancient Apparition, though. I'm going to have to give them the MVPs. They were the space creators, and even now on the big team fights, always calling two people, at least a key target, landing the Ice Blast on top of it, and I don't think anyone's really been able to survive those. And we look at the buyback. Slark actually bought back in that last fight. Uh, so did Venomancer. So we'll buy back a piece for the teams, but you know that hurts the Slark way more. Venomancer has already done what he's needed to do. He's got his level 3 alt, and he's got an Ags. At this point, you just do whatever you want, Venomancer. You're pretty much done. I mean, I guess if the game were to go extremely late or something, you'd maybe want to see him pick up a sheep stick. Just those big late game items. Maybe a Veil of Discord as well to be his final two. But they might want to jump in on my control. You got three heroes of the vicinity. It's Ogre, Anti Mage, and Venno. Axe is top, though. Axe is really the guy that they're going to need if they want to try to bring down the Slark. And uh, Roche respawning in about 40 seconds, so I'm sure that's going to be the objective here for the Lions. Uh oh. Era! Taking quite a bit of damage, but obviously with uh, four points in the spell shield. Still takes a lot, and he's got to be careful. Doesn't want to lose out his mana to the Necro Warriors and Archers. Can be pretty devastating. Old the Abyssal Blade's already finished up after uh, the Butterfly. Another 4.3k gold. So now we'll probably see the Heart coming out. The swap onto the Venomancer. Everybody can't get too close to this guy. He's going to throw out the Poison Nova and the Gale. That's going to land on these two over here. Oh, the Grave is there, but the dunk through. And now Giannis and Fan looking for Magoma. Look how big that axe is as he goes with that BKB. Oh, looking for Magoma. There you go. He'll just get into the tree line, throw out the call, and then bring down the blade. Invoker's actually going to buy back here. Arrow will TP out. He goes back home. Axe is like, I want some more. Give me some more. He's going to be sheeped up. Did manage to pop that blade mail. The Forge Spirits here from the Invoker. Slavi would like to get this kill, but I'm not sure he can. Maybe with the help of the Slark. Two cores versus one, and that Ice Blast has missed. Giannis and Fan. A little... A little too ham for his own good. You never felt more shit, did you? If you're going to go ham, you might get fried. And in this case, he does get fried. Radiance bottom barracks are Unfortunately. 10 kill advantage, and there it is. The Roche, they find it. We haven't really even talked about Bloodlust. I guess that's another reason why Axe was so big. He had the Bloodlust and the BKB. That Axe was like the size of a hero. And by an axe, I don't mean the hero, I mean his weapon that is also an axe. That thing was freaking massive. The Red God. 
And uh, Roche easily acquired. Era gonna go for the Assault Curus next. He just wants to go for those pushing items. He's not really worried about surviving. He thinks he's he's pretty set. He's 10-2 and 9. Doesn't want to go for the heart. Although I'm pretty sure he could build a dag on five with that money and they would have been able to get out of this. Out of this one. With the amount of uh, damage that Axe and Ancient Apparition are doing at the start of every fight. Oh, they didn't quite uh they didn't quite get that range rex. Looks like creeps haven't been able to come in and finish it out either. Anti Mage is going in for it now with these illusions. <laughs> it's actually it's actually worthwhile to deny your racks now. Before you're like a uh, hundred to three hundred gold to one person, you know, who really cares? But now that it gives so much to the whole team, you're like, Yeah, we're denying our racks. Like no regen on that range rex. It's like that's a tough decision, like you don't deny the range. No no way. That's 75 gold to a person. Who cares? But maybe... Maybe you try for it. Like, you're going to lose it anyways in that case. They weren't stopping those uh, anti-mage illusions, so you go for the deny. So it's kind of an interesting thing, and I'm actually surprised we we saw it happen already. It seems like a, a low probability scenario, but there it is. Magoma doing the deed. And now we're, that's going to be the last... The last regular range creep. We'll take a good look at him. He's working on it, but now he's going to be jacked. Boom. These are the important things, guys. Top tower is under the dire range creep looks freaking sick. I, I can't lie. That walk, pretty deadly. All right, the last tier two is about to fall. Slark will pick up the MKB. Invoker already went for that sheep stick, so they've got the items they need to deal with the anti mage, but can they deal with them twice? Anti mage has some items to deal with pretty much everybody. The abyssal blade, the butterfly, he'll jump in straight onto Magoma, and there's a nice defensive swap some from Zoroji. Now the ice blast goes in without Axe being there for the call. Poison Nova, oh, that hit just about everybody. Now if Eight Mother falls, it doesn't even matter. Bloodlust, BKB, Giannis and Fan coming in for Dunk One, Dunk Number Two. Can he get Slavi? Can we make it three? Dunk Number Three, it's a triple kill for Giannis and Fan. And that should be the Megas. Happy face, says the Beastmaster. Top tower has fallen. Don't know what that means, Radiance but I'm sure it's something like, congrats, your axe is pretty good. We've been picking it rather frequently. Giannis and Fan doing a lot of work on it. GG, well played, says Hanskin. That should be the game here. Game number... Well, I guess this is game number four of the day, but game number one for me. We're going to have three more coming up, and as I mentioned, uh, those will be... Too many tabs, guys. Too many tabs. Next game coming up is going to be Empire versus Secret, so that's definitely the biggest game of the day. Let's look at Empire standings here in Star Ladder. They are... They're 6-3, and three, so they're definitely still in it. If they can win out, only have three losses. They'll need Lions or Nodis Vincir to lose once more because right now they've only got two. Lions push out nine and two. Uh, Navi is seven and two. So we're going to have to see quite a few more games of them in Star Ladder. None of them today, unfortunately. It's going to be quite a bit of Team Secret and basically Unknown. But that's this game. Congrats to Lions. They've beat basically Unknown in the last three engagements. And actually Lions are, are probably not remembering what it feels like to lose. They're doing exceptionally well. Uh, that's three. Make it four in a row now. Four victories in a row for Star Ladder. Uh, their last loss in Star Ladder was to Goomba Gaming. And they've managed to beat teams like Virtus Pro and Virtus Pro Polar. Also four anchors and a sea captain. And now basically unknown fall. So Lions looking like a really, really solid team. And I I'm glad. Uh, but either way, we'll take a bit of a break here. Maybe I'll play some more guitar. Maybe I'll play Street Fighter. Who honestly knows? Maybe I'll just take a, a five-minute nap. But anyways, I'm Helium. If you like the casting, uh, you can follow here at Heliumbrella on Twitter. And of course, make sure to support Star Letter Beyond the Summit on Twitter as well. Buy up that ticket. And yeah, I'll be back for another game. Hopefully you will too.